right now this is probably one of the ones that's in some ways the most exciting and sometimes the most unusual is the electrical infrastructure and this can be a long video so again you can pause it anytime you want to take some notes i want to go through kind of the engineering part of it from where the ambulance company started and ended and where i picked up so the ambulances in general they're built again on different kinds of chassis but most of them have a battery drawer which this one does too so Almost all ambulances have three batteries, um, again, this vintage, this era, and those batteries serve two functions. Number one is to start the engine and also provide some standby power for the back of the ambulance for a very brief period of time. And also, uh, ambulances also come with on the engine, for the most part, from the research I've done, they have two alternators. So that allows them to charge the batteries quicker. So inside the ambulance which i'm going to show you in a second i showed in the first video that i published was this electrical box which looks somewhat intimidating there's a lot of stuff going on there there's circuit boards and fuses and things that are hard to understand <clears throat> but as i mentioned one of the most fantastic things about ambulance is that all the wiring is lettered and numbered so if it says something uh, on one end you'll find it on the other end so at a light or at a switch so they did a really good job of tagging things and labeling things and even in the control panel that I showed you in another video, a plumbing video, or you've probably seen it in one of the videos, that you'll start to understand that they spent a tremendous amount of time creating fail safes and engineering a thing for safety and for redundancy. So the first thing I want to talk about that I did and changed, which I'll show you in a second, is, and I'm going to, I'm going to create a scenario because that was always helpful to understand the conversation. So let's say an ambulance is dispatched to your house, in, in this example and the paramedics uh, leave the ambulance and they have only these lights on or leave a door open and they're in there working on a patient and they're in there for an hour and then they come out and they try to start the ambulance and it's the battery doesn't start now that's not good right and that's why they created this fail safe so inside the ambulance in my situation there's a little relay and it's called the commander and it runs off the ignition so essentially how this works is that it has a timer so it'll run for about five minutes so if as soon as the ambulance is turned off, the lights can stay on in here, but after a period of time, everything gets shut down. So that's why if you ever see an ambulance running somewhere, maybe in front of someone's house, maybe there's somebody physically in there, or they have to keep the climate control going. But invariably, once you take the key out of the ambulance, within a certain period of time, everything goes off here. And I think the fail safe is to prevent the batteries from dying so they can't get it back on the road to take the person where they need to take them. So what did I do? I understood that by following it and doing some internet research and tracing the wires. I spent a lot of time tracing wires here. So I figured out where the ignition switch wire was, where the in and out was, and I basically intercepted it. And I'll show you that right now. So I think this is like the journey of, this was the ambulance stuff, and this was a way to, again, create this fail safe, but now that I'm in it, and if, I, if you had one like this, you would do the same thing, and you would label it. So let's go there right now and then I'll give you the cascading of the things that I did and we'll talk about the solar and the batteries and how I charge the batteries from three different sources if you're interested. So let's begin. So over here in this particular ambulance, now I've seen many with different configurations. So remember, my ambulance and the brand is a little different than maybe a one that you've seen before, but the, the functionality is often the same. So. In here, you'll see lots of stuff. And you'll see I have some blue tape. So if I trace something, I watched it, I figured it out. And I wanted to understand I got a bungee cord here so I can keep this open. I worked on it. And you see up there, there's a big red wire um, that I taped off and that went to this commander box, which is essentially behind this wall over here. And then over here, you have circuit, circuit stuff for like the air conditioning. And then they even put spares in here and things like that. And again, if you look up closely, and you, it might be hard to see with this camera, but you'll see that there's lights here. I'll say dome lights, door, front switch, back switch, and so forth. So again, everything is numbered and lettered. And if I found something, I wanted to use something, I just taped it and labeled it on both ends because I really wanted to understand. And they actually ran plenty of extra wires everywhere. But I wanted to give you a sense of the appreciation for the level of detail that they had here and the functionality and then the ability to change things. And it just takes a little bit of time, but once you kind of start tracing stuff, you'll figure out where they go. And you see over here, there's all the negative wires that are labeled white on this big black terminal. So again, I just intercepted that stuff and separated it. And you'll see I used that gray loom here to 
protect the wires as they go through the walls. I think that's really important for vibration. I even did a little spray foam up there because when I got the ambulance, they had some communications gear in here and they removed it. And so I just sprayed that so no water would get in here. That's the standard spray foam. And by the way, I don't, I talked about this in the first video, but you can probably see here this runway up above my head here where the auction is all the lights, but you can pop all these off and you can run wires and stuff anywhere. And that's how I ran stuff for the solar and has some future stuff going on, which I'll explain in yet another video. But that's another amazing thing. Cause again, this thing is super solid and, and you can do pull-ups on this bar. I do almost every day. And so from there, there's each individual wiring. Again, there's a lot of wires that can be controlled in the control cabinet, which I'll get into in another video that deserves its own. But a lot of that stuff will come here. Like I mentioned, so you'll have some fuses up there and then everything will go like to the suction. So all that stuff's labeled over in there. And also there's some switches that you'll notice here that go up and go down, right? Right hand dome, left hand dome, up and down, on, off. As an example, here's the fluorescent lights, right? Now I can turn them on or off, right here, or I have the blue lights here, which are nice. I think they're probably to calm patients when they're in here. But there's also another feature about the ambulances, which is fantastic, right? And that is this. So when a first responder paramedic gets in here, it says fluorescent lights. So they click this on and allows them to have some lights come on right away. Now, I only have this one on, but I turn the other switches off. You can turn, you can override all the switches. But this is on a timer. I think it's three minutes and it allows somebody to get in right away and get set up and get established. And again, back to what I said in the beginning of the video, I believe this is set up on a relay. I know where the relay is. It's set up like that specifically so that nobody leaves the lights on in here and you don't uh, drain the battery. But for my application, because it's me, I know that I'm what I'm doing in here and I'm not going to, uh, to do any paramedic work. At least not that I've been told. And again, over here, as I mentioned, the, uh, the vacuum stuff still works. You see the suction here, that still works and that'll give you some pressure. You can plug in your vacuum lines here and those pumps are underneath here, underneath in the bottom of the cabinet here. And um, the DVD and radio controls to see Shrek are here as well. And the uh, lighter adapter here I put in there for that. And then this guy I put in for the cooktop. This is a dedicated line for the induction cooktop. Again, this is 1800 watts, it has its own circuit. And also have our carbon monoxide detector and my little LED light that I just sampled up about a week ago. Just trying to think if I want that. So with that said, uh, you can pause if you want the video and kind of write down some questions. But again, that's the separation of the the vehicle from the ambulance. And so I've, I've again, just for a recap, I basically intercepted that wiring. So all the stuff here runs on the main cutoff switch for the solar infrastructure and the battery infrastructure I'm about to show you. Okay. So let's go outside and we'll see somebody with their horse carriage and go through that. It's also uh, I didn't bring up here, but when you start the ambulance, you can turn this on. This is like a shot clock to let people know how much time's elapsed, um, I'm sure, for when they're um, transporting patients. Oh, and here's my friends with the horses over here. And there's a horse in there as well. Okay, now we're going to get to the fun stuff. But before I go there, I should just show you the solar panels. How about we do that? So for the solar panels, let's see if I can do this without breaking my neck. I have two 400 watt panels. They are about 40 inches by 80 inches. I have this blue taped off area for something else that's coming up, which coming up in the future. Um, because I'm in California, you gotta wash them off pretty periodically because it's pretty dry and dusty here, but they work flawlessly. And I use a specific kind of uh, caulking sealant that adheres to aluminum. That was really important. And um, yeah, and I keep them low profile so that um, uh, they don't get a lot of wind noise. I think I've seen people mount them much higher and then you have like this whistling sound and I didn't really want the whistling sound. Okay, I think I gotta talk to my friends with the horses. Let's see if we can do this and we won't be distracted. So over here, let's go through it. We have a DC disconnect. And again, this guy right here is designed specifically for solar. It's DC, okay? And all that wiring, as I mentioned, goes through this loom. 
So we ran a 10 gauge up there, positive and negative. And as I mentioned here, we have a, a two inch um, cabinet here in cavity. It's actually a little bit thicker, but this is um, a way to run all the wires. And if you took off that, that um, vent there, you would see all the different kinds of infrastructure in there. So I use that as what I would call a chaseway. And again, even here, this is the back of the kid's toy box. And then over here, this is where the auction lines came through. I just took this down and tucked them back underneath there. And as I mentioned, they had a fail safe so they could run that through here if they had to. So anyway, and I decided also to keep the tools everywhere. I think that's really important as well. So you don't have to go look for it to just kind of zip tie it up. And then over here, we have a disconnect and this 60 amp circuit breaker is specifically for the ambulance, the, all that power in that big box I just showed you. So we have a positive and a negative. The negative comes down to the negative bar here. And then the positive comes, if you follow it along, it goes in and over here into the Victron combiner. And again, this is where all this is distribu distributed, right? It's like a bus bar system, which I don't need to take down for you. So that power again comes into here. And then the solar also, right? It comes down, it goes into the charge controller. Like if you follow the wires around, it comes in here. You have the solar, the positive and negative here. And then you also have the stuff going for the battery here. Again, because the solar is going to charge the battery. And right now we're in float mode. So the batteries are being floated. I really love Victron products. Like I mentioned in the first video, they have a really great app. And I highly recommend it. And again, when you're mounting all your stuff here, I used um, split washers and flat washers and stuff because again, of vibration. So we wanna make sure the stuff doesn't shake off the wall. So I highly recommend that. And as well, if you noticed here, these fittings look a little square. I use a special crimp, which I'll make another video for on how to do that and how you heat shrink things because those wires are, um, there's a lot of little mini wires on a battery cable and you don't want them to shake and come loose, whether it was a mobile application or a standalone application, you should use a crimping tool. And that crimping tool for these are a little different than like the, the big terminals here, um, which are like a flat terminal. So that comprises the solar. And again, 800 watts, depending upon, you know, how many hours a day I could get about four hours. So that's, you know, 3.2 kilowatt hours a day, um, which is more than enough to kind of meet my needs. If, even if I'm running the cooktop for an hour, that'll be half, right? So I have more than enough solar as long as I'm in a sunny climate. But let's just say I'm not and I'm driving to some place. That's where this guy comes in. So this guy is a DC to DC charger. So as I mentioned in the beginning that the ambulance has come with two alternators, which is fantastic. So those wires I mentioned come through and come to this commander box and I've intercepted that wire and it comes here. So I'm able to get 30 amps, okay? So if you're driving for one hour, it'll give you 30 amps in one hour. And then that'll help also charge the batteries. And again, we have uh, in and out that go to this guy, to the Lynx distributor. So that's method number two for being able to charge the batteries. Then method number three, like I mentioned in the first video, is this guy. This is sure power. You know, you can plug it into your house. You can plug it into a campsite. Even if, let's say you had a generator and you were off, let's say you were in a situation where you're at a campsite and they didn't have power, but people who had, somebody had a generator, you could plug it in. You could also top off your batteries with that, that methodology as well. And again, the Victron Multiplex, this thing is awesome. My hat's off to the, my, my Dutch friends. This allows, again, 50 amp capacity pass through at 120 volts. So what that means, you can pass through a lot of power in one brief period of time. And then... Up here again, we have our, our DC disconnect. Again, this is a, a four aught heavy duty cable. Everything is heat shrinked, it looks nicer. And then over here, what I did is I put these little clamps, little rubber on so that it's more of a fail safe for me. And again, this guy right here is what they call a shunt. And that's what measures the power going through the negative, which goes through here and goes to that meter inside. So it's getting AC, it's getting uh, power, regular power, and it's getting, uh, this is the communications cable that goes to the Victron inside the control cabinet there. And that pretty much summarizes, you know, the overall architecture of this here. The programming is really easy. You're just going to tell the Victron system um, what kind of batteries you have and what the voltage windows are. If you guys have any questions, you can, you can 
uh, leave a comment below and I'll go and tell you about, about those settings. And a lot of times those settings are really driven from the battery manufacturer. And again, over here, I have a little light. So if I had to come out here at nighttime, I can take it to use to look under the ambulance or something. And I got an AC box. Again, this is a simple circuit breaker box, um, 100 amp max that we're not gonna use. But again, I have my three dedicated circuits for the GFI that I cut in here below. So I can barbecue out here and do anything I want um, right from here. And then I have the induction cooktop and then I have the refrigerator and the general receptacles. So everything's kind of broken off there. Again, everything is fused here. As you can see, I have a cover over the fuse. I had to put some Velcro on there. Highly recommend in keeping all the extra fuses on hand just in case one blows. And then I have one here for each of the specific uh, fuses that are actually in here. And again, the design of this is genius. If you ever take the cover off, they have the neutral, the negatives on the bottom and the positives on the top. So it's really done well. And as I mentioned in the first video, um, before I did anything, I laid everything out. I measured everything. You can see here I have the dimensions. So I put everything on this wall. And again, here they had those, those uh, metal struts where they mounted the oxygen tank. So I took them. First, I, I was going to take them off. I said, no, I'm just going to mount this birch plywood to it. And again, I don't have any extra screws in here. I had to recess some of these just in case. But I, what's here is here. And I just spent a little bit of time. It takes a lot of time to think about these things. But if you have any questions, I'll glad you walk you through it. And I'll create a parts list for you as well below the video. And again, over here, um, you can see you have your, your AC in and out, right? So you have your uh, positive and negative, right? This is the 4 out, right? That goes down to the batteries. And then you're going up into the Lynx distributor. And again, you have uh, one one cable that's going to this guy, and another one that's going to the um, to the shore power. And as I mentioned in the opening video, this shelf was originally way up here, and they had nothing in it. But I just repurposed it and brought it down and upcycled it, and now I have room for two more batteries if need be. But I haven't decided if I need them yet. Again, here's my two batteries here. Um, again, I put some foam so they wouldn't jump around, and I. Put a ratchet strap so it's bolted to the infrastructure. And if you look in the back there, you can kind of see those uh, unistruts that they used for the auction tanks. And again, I put um, tie wraps and these things everywhere so they wouldn't chafe when you're driving. So that's why you see stuff like this. You'll see um, everywhere I have these little little cuts. When I strip the wire, you want to put this on here and, and um, um, put some UV rated tie wrap so that um, even if one breaks is all the other one and periodically come in here Just look around over the last few months just to make sure everything's staying and I use these guys so that uh, provide some strain relief and also rubber so it doesn't chafe And uh, that's pretty much it um, I also did keep as I mentioned in the first video This is where as I mentioned there was um, the original 1000 watt inverter that they mounted upside down here in this cage where you see here was upside down and you could see a hole in the back that was facing this way you could just touch the the, the front face of it but i made it this little toolbox and um again i left one of the cables in here like i labeled it on the date you know um so now i have a way to keep the uh the battery charge for the uh the cordless drill and also you know like i have a heat gun so i could do that and some parts and i keep different things in here that i might need throughout um if you're on the road or if somebody's needing some of your help you can help them and that's pretty much it i keep uh, a meter here i keep a extension cord here um again you have ventilation all the time which is fantastic every one of these things is ventilated so there's always fresh air coming in and coming out Nothing really gets too hot in here. Even in the summer, this was mildly hot only when it's drawing a load. And you can barely hear it humming. So it's super quiet. You don't hear it inside. You don't hear it when you're sleeping, um, but it's great. And um, again, I really like the Victron system. I've used them in Hawaii. Uh, there's a lot of boating applications that use them. These are a little more expensive than other products, but I like the support and um, it's just really robust. And again, you don't see this guy on right now. Uh, this is all connected by a Bluetooth. So if I turn the ambulance on, this will light up. But again, since solar's on, we're getting float charge. But the nice thing with the app is if you have multiple appliances, I'm gonna call these things, it'll show up on your little dashboard and it'll tell you what's actually happening. 
And the nice thing is too, is if your batteries are topped off, which is which they are, then these things aren't putting any power anywhere. So it doesn't need to work. So it's kind of taking a break. And that's for the most part, the electrical. I can go through lots of detailed things. I can give you guys some wire size if you're interested or how I thought about putting stuff in certain places. And again, as I mentioned in the, in the warm up video, again, the distance between here and back there, it's about 22 by 22 by, again, this cabinet six and a half feet tall, but that top part is the toy box, which I didn't remove. So I lost a little bit of head space. I also, um, I think you don't want to put this up too high so you can't reach it. But um, yeah, that's pretty much the whole electrical. And like I said, it works really well. And I haven't any issues with um, charging, discharging. Even if I've used the induction cooktop, it works fantastic. Um, and then, you know, driving or being out in the sun a day, again, as long as you're out in the sun, it'll recharge your batteries to 100%. And it works great. And again, you have some space here if I wanted two more. And that's another thing, right? So to give you an example, these batteries are rated at 12 volts and 206 amp hours, which is approximately 2,500 watts. So I have 5,000 watts of power. And um, as I mentioned earlier, I have 800 watts of solar. Let's just say four hours of sun in a day at 3.2, right? So if I drain the battery, technically speaking, in a whole day, in, in another next sunny day or day and a half, I'm gonna fill it up. That's if I don't drive. Now, if I wanted to have some more capacity, I could pop two more in there. But again, back to experimenting and trying and measuring. And if I need to get two more, I can. But right now, uh, as long as I'm not living in Seattle in, in January, then maybe just two batteries is fine for the application that I'm using it for. And that is electrical basics. And we can get into more detailed stuff if you have questions. But... Another thing I want to point out too is like a lot of the electrical, the wiring, I just, again, recycled. So they'd use incredibly strong cord and cables, right? Which you, you don't see it behind this, but I ran stuff through this wall, you know, this heavy duty, uh, uh, looks like a giant uh, extension cord to, and I intercepted the wiring that was in the ambulance because it was built so well. And you, when you look at the terminations, you know that it's really done professionally. So um, you just, you know, you want to kind of keep that momentum and that process going for um, keeping it looking polished and clean. And um, I felt really uh, obligated to do that. That's why, again, you see the loom everywhere and um, tie wraps everywhere and, and just kind of kind of being prepared with the fuses and things like that. But, you know, it just takes some time. I mean, once you get one of these, you're not really going to know what you're looking at. I know for me, even me, you know, having some experience, you have to trace stuff. But again, the great thing is like this light here. I took the light down. I was able to run the wire into here, right? Because there's a little cavity here. And behind that command center, which is technically right here, there's a little bit of a cavity. So I was able to run the wires down. So don't be intimidated. Like if you think, oh, I can't do that. And it's like, no, you can do it. You might not be able to get from that light all the way over to that light because of there's, there's, there's a beams here, but you can go through the ceiling and make a left. And so, yeah, just, just be patient with yourself if you get one of these. Um, and again, I just wanna reemphasize, it's so quiet now, I'm in a beautiful park setting, but just look how thick these doors are and listen to when it closes. It's just super solid. And um, yeah, and every once in a while, again, this is a, uh, a light you just gotta plug in via USB. Um, and again, if I, I can always poke my hand in here. Like I say, I need another extension cord that I don't. I can always pass it through here. And uh, you got to have your safety glasses. By the way, I had these here the whole time using them. And I think it's important, especially when you're cutting and drilling things. Give you a little wide tour again. And again, even the back, uh, it's 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 pretty wide in there when you think about it. It's uh, plenty of space for anything. And I haven't talked about the lift yet. Maybe I'll, I'll do another video for that. But again, I don't think I opened the door in the first video, but you know, you can go right in here. You can vacuum, you can sweep, you can use the hose. I've done the hose that I have and just hosed everything out. And you have that, that base to the seats metal that could maybe get a little rusted, but um, it's pretty straightforward to keep it clean in here. And uh, again, you have two more sets of plugs here, which is great. 
Um, and again, if you listen really carefully, you can barely hear the refrigerator. Well, hopefully that was helpful for you. Just a little closing thoughts on the Lamborghini, which is what I'm calling it. I, it's like an ambulance, but a Lamborghini. But again, my process for going through this was to take the time to like, take things down. I followed the wire. Does this really go here? You know, like I ran a backup camera. I did a wireless one, but I still need to get constant power. And I had to like think, okay, get the meter out. Where does this go? And then when you undo the control center in the front, that's like a big anaconda of wires and it can be a little intimidating. But just take the time. You gotta, you know, wipe it off and read and say, okay, this is this. And I was able to find schematics on the internet. Thank you. And um, so you can kind of understand a little bit of the the thinking and then the, the, the schematics, right? You can see where things go. You don't know exactly where they go. They're just kind of giving you like a one dimensional view. They don't show it actually going to this command center here. But spent some time. Like I said, I took things apart, looked at it and made sure the wire went here or there. Um, I didn't really have to run much wiring. I ran one wire to the pump. Obviously, I ran the wires from the solar down through a very, you know, maybe six feet into the into the disconnect area because, again, I wanted it to be over there. Um, but it really hasn't been a lot of wiring done. I ran the wire, excuse me, down to the um, to the ball valve underneath for the water inside the gray tank. I have a few other little ideas I'd like to think about doing. But for the most part, again, most of the wiring is already done. And the uh, the lights here, like I said, I was able to figure out what kind of light bulb it was, and I ordered LED, just, just popped it in. The wires, the lights outside, they were halogen. And I converted them into LEDs, and that requires its own little video. But I went from 60 watts per light to three watts. So that's significant if you're running everything off batteries. Like right now, again, if you look at the battery monitor right now, what does it say? To zoom in for you. It says 100%. Sorry, it's a little bit glaring, but there's 100% on Victron. And why is that? Obviously, because it's a beautiful sunny day. But point being is that um, you got to reduce the energy footprint. That's really the key. So that's why this refrigerator, and I can make it, I'm going to make a whole video just on the idea of the refrigerator because there's lots of debates in the uh, RV space on whether you should DC or AC, or there's ones that are DC, AC, and propane, multi-fuel. I mean, I, I really think in closing that you should keep it simple. And here's why. Now, the Victron inverter, give you a little technical information, that uses 20 watts per hour when it's on. So every day you're losing 480 watts just evaporating to the air just it's like what they call standby time and idle just to wait for you to turn the switch on so you have to weigh that right like do i leave that on and then i always have the refrigerator running for me it was a good trade-off um because again i could always buy another battery if i needed to i already have enough solar so again i spent some time thinking about it but again i bought the refrigerator and again you have 30 days to return something i plugged in a meter to it and i would recommend getting this little plug and you start measuring things around your house. Like, what does it really draw? What can you really put in here? And you leave it in for a week or a month and see what an appliance you have in your home is running and say, okay, how would that work here? And you know, you've probably seen Energy Star labels in America where it'll tell you what the draw is for the year. And obviously that's based upon conditions like uh, in, inside your house. This is like a house. So it could be really cool throughout the year. It's not gonna run as much, right? Because it's an insulated box within an insulated box. So the only way to do it, it's kind of like you have to be a coach. You have to have a clipboard and a stopwatch. You gotta know, you gotta be able to measure. So that's why I bought this measuring device. And then I'll be able to know, I'll be able to see when it spikes, turns on and goes down. But invariably, if the battery goes down a little bit, by the next day, it's almost 100%. So obviously I'm not opening and closing the door. But again, you can barely hear it running right now. Just a little subtle hum. And back to the idea and, and closing, I'll, like I'm going long, but when you buy a DC refrigerator from a specific manufacturer or a contract manufacturer, they have to ship it to you. It's probably not maybe in your area, even in where I'm living, it's a very big RV area. Hard to find them, probably because of what's happened the last couple of years. But to me, that wasn't the biggest issue. And even cost, it was a lot more money. But it's what happens when it breaks. Now you got to ship the thing somewhere. You know, it could be anywhere. 
Now, if this thing breaks, I bought this refrigerator at a big box store. There are about 5,000 of those big box stores, the orange box store and the blue box store. And there's also Walmart and other places. But you can go into any of those stores anytime and just swap out your refrigerator and get a new one if this thing happens to fail. So I, that was the way of doing all that. And these refrigerators are like 200 bucks. So, and it's efficient. So it's quiet, efficient, it's big. You can, you have four shelves in there. You have two freezer shelves. I got my chocolate in there. Too bad you weren't here, I'd give you a piece. Homemade chocolate, by the way. But the point is, is that I, I thought this through a lot. I gave it a lot of consideration. And then I have the data to point to that it's worth doing an AC refrigerator. I think the compressors are getting better. The technology is getting better. And maybe you don't need a DC refrigerator if you have enough room for solar, right? Or you're living in a situation where it's sunny, like in California. Again, if you were in Seattle or Montana and it's winter time and not getting a lot of sun, maybe that's a different conversation, but you need to measure. Anyway, that's all I got for now. That was a long video. Thanks for hanging in there. And I'll go through anything else. If you post anything below this video on something you don't understand, I'll gladly walk you through it. Thanks for watching and please subscribe if you're curious. Have a great day.